Hi everybody, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine. Now, equalizing your ears is a fundamental skill for scuba divers and free divers as well, but it's not a skill that we can like show you like most other skills. It's one of those skills that we have to try and explain to you to, for you to try yourself. And there are a few ways of equalizing your ears. There's not just a single way. Uh, they're called maneuvers uh, in a lot of cases, but all we're trying to do is to equalize a tiny airspace inside of a small tube between your throat and your ears. To start with, we're going to look at some general basic do's and don'ts that can help to improve the effectiveness of these maneuvers, because there are some points where even if you do equalize perfectly, you simply won't be able to. So, to start with, start equalizing your ears before you even reach the water. I'll do it in the car journey and setting up my equipment as well. I'll be equalizing my ears just to kind of get all the parts moving and supple and ready to equalize properly when you're actually in the water. Salt water can cause tissues in your nose and your throat to swell a little bit, which can make it harder to equalize. So in the water, try to prevent any water from going up your nose and in your mouth. I mean, I know that's usually the plan anyway, but do pay particular attention to that. But now you know that if you do get some water up your nose at the beginning of the dive, it can be a little bit harder to equalize at times. So just be prepared for that. You also need to equalize early and often at the start of the dive because you can reach a depth where the pressure around you can be so great that you actually can't equalize even if you're doing it perfectly. That's why you've probably heard the term early and often during your training so much so that you never get to the point where you cannot equalize. On the descent from the very start before your head has even dipped under the water, begin equalizing and keep going even if you don't feel anything. You should never feel any discomfort in your ears whatsoever and equalizing is all about technique, it's not about force. If your ears aren't equalizing, don't try harder because it could be that you've gone so deep that the pressure is just too great. If you can't equalize, then ascend and try again. Ascending relieves the ambient pressure around you to increase your chances of equalizing properly. And if it still doesn't work, it's just time to end the dive. If you keep descending down, you can really hurt yourself and it's better to miss one dive than never be able to dive again. If you are struggling to equalize, then being vertical in the water can actually help mucus to drain as they naturally drain downwards as we're walking around upright and looking up and stretching your neck as well can help. It helps to drain everything. So if you are struggling, just try and go shoulders upright and look up to the surface and equalize. The most fundamental maneuver that you're taught is Valsalva, where you pinch your nose and blow. By blocking your nose and trying to exhale through your nose, you inflate the eustachian tube by forcing that air through the restriction, which is why you feel that kind of pop in your ears, and that's the airspace that we're trying to equalize. Imagine a tube, a bit like a straw, with a soft opening that is naturally closed. As you descend, that opening gets pulled in tighter as the airspace reduces in volume, so we need to pump some extra air volume inside and equalize the pressure. Valsalva is the most common technique that we teach because it's fairly easy to explain and it works for many divers and it's quite a reasonable hand signal as well, but it doesn't work for every diver and professionals often recommend other techniques as well. So here are some alternatives. This one sounds a little gross, voluntary tubal opening, but it's the method that I tend to use whilst diving. Uh, sometimes I modify it a little bit to make sure it works properly. It's pretty simple and it's hands-free. If you're doing it right you, with enough practice, you can do that all the way down so you can be doing stuff whilst equalizing. Remember that we're trying to open up that tube in your throat and VTO, 
voluntary tubal opening, um, I'll use VTO from now on, uh, is a lot like a yawn without actually uh, opening your mouth in the water and your regulator falling out. You kind of tense your jaw uh, and push your bottom jaw forwards. That pulls and stretches at the opening which lets some air from your throat into that airspace and equalizes your ears. To practice it, make yourself yawn and think about which muscles are tensing in your throat and then recreate that basically. If you do it well enough on the surface, yes, you probably will end up uh, yawning, but it's quite effective. Toynbee is the swallow maneuver. Pinch your nose, but instead of blowing, you're going to swallow. Swallowing starts that peristalsis movement that, like VTO, it moves and pulls things in your jaw to open up that tube. Sometimes just the act of swallowing helps divers. You don't always have to hold your nose, but this works for a lot of divers and it means that you're not going to be yawning in front of everybody. But yeah, just, just a swallow sometimes helps. Frenzel is when you make a K sound or move your mouth as if you're trying to make a K sound that tenses the back of your tongue, which forces air into that eustachian tube. Again, pinching your nose whilst making that K movement can help trap the air in the right space so that when you do make that K movement, the air has nowhere else to go except into the eustachian tube and equalize your ears. So those are the basic maneuvers for equalizing your ears, but in some rare cases, you can get a squeeze in your sinuses, which are tougher to equalize on the go. If you feel a sharp pain in this sort of area when you're descending, that's a sinus squeeze. If you, if you feel it in your face instead of in your ears. It normally occurs if your sinuses are congested, a trapped airspace starts to shrink and cause a capillary to burst in some cases. A small amount of blood can enter your throat, which can be quite distressing, but also quite bad for infections. The best thing is to either avoid the dive completely if you're feeling congested or abort the dive if you do feel this kind of sinus pain in your face. There is also a flip side to this, which is called a reverse block. A reverse block occurs at the end of the dive as you're ascending. As you ascend, the air spaces in your body start to expand, and in most cases, it can just escape um, in your ears. That excess volume just pushes itself out of the eustachian tube, and with normal clear sinuses, it just migrates its way out. However, in some rare cases, mucus can block an airspace mid-dive, and this trapped air is expanding with nowhere to go, so it stretches the sinus, and it can be very, very painful. The best thing to do is to descend until the pain stops, and then gradually ascend as slowly as possible yet another reason to aim to end the dive with plenty of gas left in your tank to give you as much time as possible to slowly ascend and give that gas a chance to escape as slowly as possible. It usually can escape just at a slower rate than usual, but if you try to rush it, you can really hurt yourself. And again, don't be surprised if you get a nosebleed or something, but do get it checked out by a physician before your next dive. Ideally an ENT, an ear, nose and throat doctor, because things can get infected and it's best to get it checked out first. If you normally suffer with sinus problems, I'm gonna pop a link to the, uh, to the Dan page on the sinus barotrauma to look through. They go into much greater detail about what's going on and what you can do for you, the dive operator and the physician as well. So if you do have issues, there'll be a link down in the description and it would have popped up in that top corner. Now, if you're ever in doubt, it's always better to go back 
and avoid the dive. You should never try to push past it. Uh, you're just gonna hurt yourself. And if you ever see your buddy throw up the something wrong with my ears, then just go along with it and be wherever they need you to be. If it's at the beginning of the dive, then be prepared to head back to the surface and end the dive there. And if it's a reverse block, you need to think about what you can do to give your buddy the most time as possible to ascend at a rate that doesn't damage their sinuses. But give each of these a quick try before your next dive, and if one doesn't work, then you simply try another one or mix it up. Some divers combine techniques into something that works for them, but the human body can be a crazy thing at times, and if your normal technique doesn't work, try a different one. If that doesn't work, ascend and try again. It's always about equalizing early and often, and it's never about how hard you can do the technique. You're just gonna burst a blood vessel. Um, if you blow far too hard and then it mixes with the water and blood goes everywhere and it looks kind of bad, uh, it's more about the technique of how you equalize instead of how hard you equalize. Now, hopefully that helped. Uh, as I said at the start, equalizing techniques aren't something that we can like physically show you i mean we can show you but it's not the most obvious for you to see what's going on but hopefully my explanations helped and maybe gave you some other equalizing techniques that might work for you i myself yeah i use that yawning ugh, vto it means that i'm hands free whilst equalizing but at times i'll still pinch my nose if i need to it's just whatever works for you if you found these useful, then please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more advice. Uh, if you have any questions that you would like me to discuss, then pop it down in the comments below and type in the Ask Mark hashtag to get it included in a Q&A. And head over to scubadivermag.com for the latest scuba diving news, gear reviews, and other scuba diving content, including our worldwide monthly magazine publication. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving. <laughs>